Sandhi, Desha, Buddhi, Antara, and Antarantara in astrology, you are having also Yuga, Yugantara, Yugantarantara. In Krita Yuga also, Krita, well done is known as Krita. Treyadhan is a three-fourth done. Dwapara is half done. Kalushita is Kali. That which is confused is known as Kali. So each and every Yuga has the cyclic rotations of the same thing. So there is Krita Krita, Krita Treyadha, Krita Dwapara, Krita Kali. Krita Krita Krita, Krita Krita Dwapara, Krita Krita Treyadha, Krita Krita Kali. Right and you can have any number of dimensions are possible. And we have to discuss it in a different seminar. So this periodicity of establishing the time of a person is also very but confusing and coming to material archaeology, even if you get an element, how you can get an element, he has well said that you cannot get an element which has been, for example, there are five things. One is Bhasmikara, that which is reduced into action, ashes. Second thing is Nimagna, that which is immersed in water. See, there is something known as Laya. What is Laya? There are three types of Laya. One is Laya, second is Vilaya, third is Pradaya. Laya is, for example, if there is a mud pot, pottery, terracotta, they have identified in Sumerian, Mesopotamian, in Mayan civilizations. If it is put inside the earth without any use, it is laya. If it becomes the same earth itself, putting something into fire that becomes ash, then gets into mud and becomes earth, that which is dispersed inside the water, that becomes hydroatomic in nature and dispersed. That which is put inside the earth will become the earth itself. That which is put in the akasha, that will become sub-molecular or subatomic in nature and dispersed totally beyond your visibility. So something that is going out of your usage and sight is known as laya. Something that is going beyond its material nature, merging with the primordial element, prakriti is known as vilaya. The total world being absorbed by the belly of God is known as pradaya. So, then there is a period of lakhs of years where by these things would have been merged into the primordial basis and fundamental element where you can get. If somebody says that there is an archaeological evidence for the exact thing, that is known as robbery. That is known as blackguardism. That is known as absurdity, idiocy and fooling. So, Rama not having archaeological evidence itself is an evidence for Rama. <laughs> if you get an element, if you get an element, what is the surety that the element is of the age that is carbon dating? That is seasonal, that is date understanding, that is a tripular understanding, falcular understanding, fossil studies, innumerable scientific methods we have invented. Okay. Even if the age is there, what is the connectivity between those things? Somebody asked, there is some sort of missile invented at Dwaraka. Okay. That shows that there was a missile. What is the exact connectivity of the same thing with Krishna? You have to bring only literature for everything. How you can bring the element? Even if the person is Krishna, which Krishna is that? He told about Vishwamitra. Which Vishwamitra? He is an Adhikari Purusha. Vishwamitra Sasuttam Bhavati. So says the Veda. It is the name of a person and post, like commissioner. Which commissioner? Of which era? So, even in archaeological evidence, it is not complete because you cannot date the element. Even if you date the element, you cannot establish connectivity through archaeology. Even if you establish the connectivity, personal identification of the exact person, how it can be imagined in archaeology? Archaeology is having a different area. It is the difference between cookery and doing something in furnace. Both are dealing with fire. But that is different. It is just like the difference between a tailor's work and a surgeon's work. Both are having a needle and thread, but the work is different. So archaeology has its own limitation and it has its own periodicity of starting. So whenever people started to do something in Laya, archaeology can understand. Whenever that is in Vilaya, theology can understand. Whenever something is in Pradaya, only super spiritual understanding and liberation can understand. So spiritualism, spiritualism, spiritual history, religious history and social history. Social history deals with Laya, religious history deals with Vilaya and spiritual history can only deal with Pradaya. This is the way of understanding this thing. And coming into the real sector of what we call Ramayana, what is the problem? You should have a greater belief. Somebody, he put a very good suggestion, but that was a weaker suggestion. He told that you believe your father, you believe your grandfather and your ancestors. Why can't you believe Rama? What is the proof of your grandfather? It is not so. It is a weaker source of showing something for mitigating our theory. Because whenever you say about something, about your own family, yes or no, you have been there. Knowing and not knowing makes a difference. Whenever you have to worship somebody, surrender somebody, you should have a clarity. Whereas in the family, it is not a must. So whenever you are showing somebody as a greater element for a common society, for a wider approach, for a greater benefit at a mega and meta transformative level, you should have
have a proper tool of mitigation and establishment of care in the society and merely showing our ancestral ignorance towards Rama's ignorance, it is not a suitable thing. We should have a greater belief and also a powerful tool for that. And saying that we believe ourselves, our mother says he is our father, we believe. Those things are either different and science has nullified because of DNA test. Now we can prove whether the mother says or not. So innumerable things are there. So, just as he has rightly pointed out, most of the problems caused to Ramayana is made by people, those who have constructed temples worshipping Rama and written and reading Ramayana. Most of the spiritual people, because of over-enthusiasm, because of extremism, chauvinism, negligence, ignorance, subservience, cultural invasion and fusion, those people, they have spoiled the greatness of Ramayana, they have forgotten to establish, they have vindicated the pride of Ramayana when it was in opposition. It is a very, very late awakening and awareness that is happening in the society and it is a very pitiable area also. And coming into Puranas, if you accept Ramayana, you have to accept it. What is the type of accepting Ramayana? How we, we should accept Ramayana, I want to say and conclude this issue. Number one, there are few intricacies in Ramayana which are also some sort of uh, imbalanceable elements that are hidden in all Puranas. Number one is, you are seeing uh, innumerable structures in Ramayana which have elucidation. It was 1000 Yojanas length, 200 Yojanas height. There are innumerable descriptions for Yojana. In astronomy that is different, in Jodhya that is different, in astrology it is different, in Purana it is different. 11.3, 11.2, 11 11.7, 13, 13.1, 13.8, 21, these are all the descriptions for Yojanas in different places. So even if you accept as 10 miles, 1000 miles somebody's child was gone. So innumerable descriptions are there. How to conclude them? How to just justify? If it is true exactly, then it should be also true. If you take something as exaggeration, then the possibility of that also to be exaggeration will also pervade that. In logic, it is not as pervasion of fallacy. If you prove a composite element, you have to prove it fully. If you say that this is total, then everything will be totally fallacious in nature. So you have to understand this. The second problem, apart from this, is paranormal phenomena. Persons flying, transfiguration, configuration, self-figuration, astral travel, innumerable things are paranormal gadgets are there. Like Pushpa Vimana, Padatrana, these are all the gadgets. Apart from the personal psychic powers of activation, conducting astral travel, Grihantar Sanchara, Deshantar Sanchara, Dehantar Sanchara, Agra Grihana, Sara Grihana, Shapadana, Varadana, Yogadana, innumerable things are there. You can petrify, petrify, Ahadevas, petrify into stone. You can create something. And the third thing is supragenetics. The very third problem to modern genetics in mythology is supragenetics. There are special people known as Rishis. Those who are born civilized, not acquired civilization as per the modern science. Number two, there are Apsaras. There are innumerable other denizens like Naga, Akimara, Akim Purusha and other people. And people were created by will instead of the normal genesis, biogenesis, abogenesis, asexual production, sexual reproduction. Instead of the normal means, we have seen people who have been made out of purification. Throw water, immediately it will come from a stone. Then cursing a person to become already a tool. So you can create somebody by your will, cognitive will. So these things are known as supragenetics. And the final thing is exobiasis, life in the other planets. Somebody told Neil Armstrong did not visit the moon first time, it was Dasharatha who was invented with Chandra. So this type of things, exobiasis, interplanetary travel, and innumerable things. One more thing is anthropomorphism. We have dealt with that. How we can call them? Even Sita asked, Naranam, Vanarancha, Kathamasi, Samagama. How these human beings have interacted with these uh, Vanaras, with these monkeys, and how this relation has been built. So, innumerable such discussions are there. They have interpreted in uh, the traditional language as totemism. You must not have heard about totemism, like shamanism and animism. Totemism is a particular type of ancient primitive culture in which they believe that human beings have a common homogenization between animals and humans. A totem deer is known as Jambava. A totem monkey it is known as Hanuman or somebody else. A totem vulture is known as Jatayu. How a person can be anthropomorphic? It is possible, just as in planets, in lower planets, even the higher elements are there, they will be lower than even the lower elements of the higher planets. You should understand, you should hear it three times. We are in the lower planet, we are only higher elements. We will be lower than naturally. For example, a servant maid in America will earn more than a GM or a managing director of a company here. Naturally, I want to put the small example. Like that, it is anthropomorphism. Innumerable such things are there. There are innumerable things. Even somebody depicted that uh, it is a fight between Dravidians and Aryans. Somebody told that it is a fight between Brahmanism and Buddhism. And somebody concluded that it is allegorical. Rama, Ravana, everybody, they are allegorical. 
they are representing goodness and evil. Really, nobody existed. Even in our religion, we have innumerable Ramayanas, you know that. Allegorical Ramayanas are there. Figurative Ramayanas are there. Metaphysical and metaphorical way of rendering is there. So, innumerable type of Ramayanas are there. Why this problem started, I want to hit a small thing. Because the understanding, the origin of universe itself is wrong in our culture. Because we are believing the European culture and Western knowledge, number one. When this universe was created, 17 to 20 billion years ago, then this earth was formed 4.5 billion years ago. Then life, the unicellular organism, they have been formed 3.5 billion years ago. Then the homo sapiens, the human beings, they started 5 to 7 million years ago. Then civilization started just before 3500 to 1020 BC was considered to be the area of the civilization by these people, like Mahavarian civilization, the Minoan civilization of the Greek, and the Indus Valley civilization between 3500 and 1200 BC. So, understanding the origin of the universe, origin of the birth, origin of the life, origin of human beings and civilization. Why there is a gap? From 3000 BC, within these 5000 years, we have reached. What is the reason that has not protected these people from being civilized for millions of years ago? There is not proper answer. So, as we have concluded, as the Europeans have concluded that, number one, the universe and human life is formed only out of chimpanzees. And second thing, it is a very recent abomination. So that which is there before the era of Christ and especially the calculation of the 3000 years of civilization, whatever that causes that limit, they cannot digest at all. They will try their level best to suppress the same thing to be put into para-historical dream like fiction, imagination like that or they will try to postpone the same thing before AD or somewhat later BC of 100 BC or 200 BC. This is the first problem. Without understanding this problem of Eurocentric interpretation of life formation and civilization, you cannot understand why history is to be revisited, revived and resurvived. You cannot understand all of these things without understanding this basic idea. He has told about the software planetarium. Planetarium software has been made by Pushkar Bhatnakar. A very great scholar known as Pushkar Bhatnakar, he has made a good effort. He said that 5114 BC, January 10th, was Rama's birthday and September, exactly he has given the dates as if he was with Valmiki. September 12th, 5076, Hanuman met Sita and 5077, October 9th, there was a, a dual solar eclipse. At the time of the 30th year of exile, everything is mentioned in planetary, but that was cut down by last of people because of the tradition which says that the sun is in the Aries will not have happened if it is there in the 10th of January. 10th of January cannot coincide with the tradition where we celebrate our Ramanami, which may be in between April 13th and May 14th. And it cannot coincide with it all. And 12th, 13th, if the sun is in the Aries and Venus is in the Pisces, if the ascendant as well as the Jupiter and moon, they are located in the Cancer, if there is Saturn in the Libra, if there is a possibility of the same Puja Mercury to be located in the Capricorn, there is no possibility of the person to be born in 12.30 p.m. but safely between 11 to 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. So there are innumerable astronomical clashes also. This is not a problem to Rama. Even there is a lot of historical debate going upon even Jesus, where one third of the whole global population is worshipping Jesus, there is also a very great dimensional attack. Ellen Johnson is uh, the Federation head of the Atheist Communication. He has declared that there is no historical evidence that there existed a person known as Jesus. Bertrand Russell, in his treatise, Why I am not a Christian, he told that nobody can prove that there Jesus exists. Even if he exists, I don't mind. It is not of any worth. That's why I am not a Christian. <laughs> Very great author and historian, Bill Durant, he has mentioned that Krishna, Osiris, Atheist, Adonis, then Mitras and the Danosius, these are all the various leaders of the period, like Krita, Osiris, Atis, Adonis are the Greek, Roman, Mesopotamian, Incan and Maya leaders who are also revolutionary. Most of the people are crucified, most of the people they have been taken in abduction or taken in exile. All of these things, most of the incidents are similar in nature and he concluded, we didn't conclude that it is only a fictional webwork or network which has been culled out from various stories of the Eastern West. By so it is not only a missile against Rama, even the Jesus Christ when the whole world believes. So there are also innumerable records. Like uh, there is a very great record known as Fla Flavius Josephus. Flavius Josephus was the first person to record Jesus. And Cornelius Tacticus, he was also the, the first person to record in antipathies of Jews. But everything was later founded as interpolations which have been 
introduce this slide. I want to quote that the former director of the National Institute of Oceanography, Dr. S. R. Rao, he has clearly mentioned that Hampi, the present Hampi is the Kishkinda. Apart from that, Pattapadu, Pasalapadu,